World War II? Terrible time for humanity? Amazing time for turbochargers. Yeah, the world was on fire, but turbos were literally cooking. During WW2, turbochargers absolutely exploded in use. Legendary planes like the B-17 Flying Fortress, B-24 Liberator, P-38 Lightning, even the German Focke-Wulf 190 all relied on turbos to survive high-altitude dogfights. Engine dying at 30,000 feet? We gotta boost it! Boom, boom, stop! General Electric and Ford together produced over 300,000 turbochargers during the war. But after the war, car companies were like, yo, what if we boosted the grocery car? They tried experiments, but nothing took off until 1962. That's when GM dropped the first mass-produced turbocharged passenger cars ever, the Oldsmobile Jetfire and Chevrolet Corvair Monza Spider. They were iconic. And at the same time, total failure. The Jetfire's engine was called the Turbo Rocket, and to hit the advertised 215 horsepower, it needed something called Turbo Rocket Fluid. Yes, that was the actual name. What was this magic juice? 50% distilled water, 50% methanol, and a tiny bit of anti-rust. So basically, it was early water meth injection strapped to a carbureted turbo engine that absolutely loved to detonate if you even looked at it wrong. And if you ran out of turbo rocket fluid, the car would shut the turbo off to save the engine. You can imagine what happened next. Why no boost? Peter, refill, please. People forgot to refill it. Some poured in tap water. Engines blew up. Customers blamed the car. Dealerships eventually offered free turbo removal just to stop the chaos. Sales collapsed. The Jetfire died after just one year. But here's the twist. Yeah, these cars failed, but they proved turbocharging works, and they paved the way for every boosted monster we have today. If you think this was crazy, wait until you hear what happened next when turbos entered racing and completely changed motorsports forever. Subscribe so you don't miss part four.